For your next project, your jack-o'-lanterns, I want you to start with a little bit more clay. So this time I want you to take your bag, roll it down halfway, and then get your fishing line because your fishing line is what you're gonna cut it with. Um, notice I just lined my um, table with this newspaper. I just got it out of the mailbox um, because you can always just peel it off later. So I'm gonna get my fishing line and I'm gonna find about the halfway mark. So it's kind of like flossing. I wrap it around my fingers um, and then just drag it. I use my thumbs to press against and then I just kind of drag it all the way across and just pull it. And then you've got halfway. Then um, I wanna do the same thing halfway again. Get it wrapped around my fingers. And then you're just gonna drag it straight down to the table. And then this is what you're gonna use for your pumpkin. So this is a quarter of your piece. Put the rest of the clay back in your bag and try to seal it up really well. Make sure it's always zipped up and squeeze any excess air out. If you feel like your clay is starting to get dry already, go ahead and spritz some water in your bag and then close it up. Now that you've got your piece, of clay that you're gonna make your pumpkin out of. You're gonna use your fishing line one last time to cut this in half. And these are gonna make each pinch pot that you're gonna to connect together later. So now you have just about half. To prepare your clay, you're gonna go ahead and form it into a sphere. So when you do that, you wanna make sure that you're not getting any air pockets inside and you're not overworking the clay. So I really just kind of hit the clay in the, on the corners until it's starting to form a sphere shape. As you start to form your sphere, make sure if you're starting to get folds in the clay, you smear them together so that you don't get any of those air pockets. And just kind of use your fingers to shape the sphere. Um, don't flatten it out first, just get it in a good circle shape, two spheres. From your two spheres, you're going to make two pinch pots and then you're going to join your pinch pots together using the attaching um, method of scoring and adding slip. So I went ahead and made my first one. Um, I've tried to really work to make it smooth and anytime I have cracks at the top, I just smooth it with my finger. Keep smoothing with your finger and actually smear the clay. Um, don't just try to use water to just um, fill it in. You really want to smear the clay and mix the clay together. The other thing that's really important when you're working with clay is to know, um, be aware of how thick the walls are of whatever you're making. Um, you want it to be like maybe a quarter of an inch thick. Um, so here's my hand for reference. You really want the walls to be even of your pumpkin or anything that you make. Um, it should be even. So if I run my fingers um, through the entire uh, pinch pot here, it should feel pretty similar in thickness all the way through. Um, just to give you guys an idea of how you would start a pinch pot, I know some of you have done it before, but once you have your sphere shape, you're going to go ahead and start pushing your thumb into the middle of your clay and you just work your way around. It's kind of in a circle. You want to be sure that you're pushing in towards the middle and not just pinching up here at the top because then it gets really cracky and dry up here at the top. So push all the way down towards the middle until you've started to get like a rounded um, cup shape. Keep working in a circle and you try, um, try not to flatten it out at the rim either at the lip, this is called a lip where it opens. You really wanna just try to keep it even and look like a sphere. So I'm starting to get some dry areas and some cracking. Um, and at this point, before I go further, I wanna use my thumb to like drag the clay, smear the clay over the cracks and do this as you go. You'll also probably get some cracks down at the bottom and you wanna do the same thing, smear your clay, smear it. Um, and then you're gonna just keep going, keep working it around. These are called pinch pots because you're pinching with your thumb and your um, index or middle finger and squeezing the clay and you're kind of dragging it up towards the um, lip, dragging it from the bottom kind of towards the top. Also, once I start to get the shape that I want, the bowl shape that I want, um, I start to use my thumb and I kind of smear from the middle um, back to the top, back towards the palm of my hand. 
And that way I can start to test how thick everything is and really see if it's starting to even out. If there's a thick area, I try to move the clay a little bit more. If it's thin, I try to shift some clay over the thin spot so that I don't have any weak areas in my pinch pot. So you can sit against the ground if you want and just kind of try to feel around, make sure it's as even as you can possibly get it. If you've got cracking, which you probably will, um, you're gonna use your finger to keep smoothing the clay out as you go. Don't try to do it in the end and don't try to rush the process. It takes a little while to get it exactly as you want it. Once you get it to the size that you like, you should hold both of your pieces together just to see if they're about the same in circumference. Um, and I think mine are pretty close. At this point, I'm going to get my slip and a fork, and that's how I'm gonna join these, by scoring and adding my slip. You all should have a little cup of slip um, that you got in your bag, your supply bag. It's probably settled a little bit, so you should shake it up. Um, for this slip, we made this out of old dry clay, and we added a little bit of water to it. Once this is gone, you'll need to make your own slip. And I would use a cup like this and get some clay, some old clay and put it in here, add to it and add a little bit of water. So slip is really just clay and water mixed together really well. Now to join your clay, I want you to grab something like a fork or a toothpick or something that's gonna be able to scratch up your surface really well. When you score your piece to join it together, you've gotta to score both parts both sides. So you want to score it up really well. Um, and so I'm going to drag the fork in one direction and then I'll drag it in another direction to make like lots of X's. So it should be scored well and look like this. You need to do that all the way around both pieces, both sections that you're going to attach. Don't skip this step and don't be too light. You really want to move the clay and shift the clay so that you have little grooves so that your slip can really sink in. Now that I've got it all scored, you're gonna go ahead and you can use a paintbrush or you can use your finger and add slip. This paintbrush is kind of small, so I'll actually just use my hand. So you want to layer it on. You just have to do this to one side. Layer it on kind of like mayonnaise. Spread it all the way across and then you're going to attach your pieces. All right, I've got one side completely covered in my slip, and I was careful not to just press down too hard so that I, I didn't want to flatten out all the grooves that I had just made with the fork. Now you're gonna get your other piece, and you're gonna join these together. So kind of start at the bottom, and start to kind of squeeze everything together so that it starts to fit. If there's a piece um, sticking out like this, it looks like mine's not fitting exactly right. So try to just squeeze the clay a little bit so that it joins really well. At that point, you can start to squeeze together the seams. So it looks like this, but don't push so hard that you collapse your entire sphere. You wanna let it set up for just a little bit. So I'm just kind of working slowly around my seam so that, it so that I know it's joined really well. Okay, I actually set, let mine sit overnight. I made sure it was um, closed up really well so that no air would get to it. I've also kind of decided that this is my bottom, um, so I've just barely pushed it against the paper so it's flattened just a little bit. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is um, close the seam. So you should have this um, little tool that we've made out of Gaddy Town cards. If you already have some kind of smoothing tool, like a um, ribbing tool, that's what this would be called, as a rib, um, you can use that. But for right now, this is probably what you have. Um, and so you're gonna use that tool to um, move the clay, like swipe the clay across from one um, sphere to the next. You wanna go pull down in some areas, and then I would turn it and pull up in some areas because you want some of the clay from the bottom to move up, some of the clay from the top to move down. And you really, um, I'm being pretty firm with it because I really don't want there to be an area where I can see the seam at all. 
So you're going to do that all the way around and you want to kind of look at it in the light. And if you can see the seam, you need to do it a little bit more. Okay, I just finished um, smoothing the seam together with my rib tool. Um, this is the bottom. So I just like to go around at that point and just kind of smooth any cracks or any um, little wrinkles in the clay just with my thumb, just to make sure everything's smooth and evened out. Alright, so now you get to decide what shape you want your pumpkin to be. Um, I like to go ahead and make sure it's round and then I know that the stem is going to come um, out of the top so I'm going to press down a little bit. I want to flatten my pumpkin some and then I'll press down more in the middle so that my stem can have a little home. 